Hi, I'm Tom Evans and welcome to another Zone Show. And I'm thrilled today to be interviewing Lars Moore from Denmark on the first podcast of 2015. Hi, Lars. Hi, hi, Tom. Well, great pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for, for taking the time out today. Now, you're a very intriguing man. I don't know if it's right to call you a polymath. Would that be a, a good description? A, a polymath. You've done so many things in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could say that, but uh, yes, of course. Yeah, so you've been a musician? Yes, for many years, but uh, and I'm I'm still is uh, actually, but um, but it's it's in a complete uh, new way to me because I've been in the showbiz for for many years, thirty years or so. So of course that's completely different. But when I while I was uh, in the showbiz, since I was very young, um, I've been studying the world's religions and philosophies, and actually that has been my main purpose and my main kind of work the the music bit was like you know i was young in the 60s maybe you remember also i do yes <laughs> how it was you know that so for me to me i was a musical kid but i never had really had any musical ambitions so uh, for me to to seek into the musical world and and show this was rather uh, in order to find a, a place in the world a, a, a way to be here, but my main purpose has always been uh, spiritual, and, and my interest has always been spiritual. And you've written two books: the, the O Manuscript and the the Law of Light, which I'd like to explore with you. I mean, I've been I've been I'm writing thirteen books, but this is uh, the books that have been uh, translated into English and published by Watkins in London. Well, can I explore something with you, which is oh. kind of intriguing? It's kind of relevant to a the book I'm writing at the moment, which is kind of interesting, because uh, I kind of found found the spiritual path by accident and almost by resistance as well. I've kind of resisted it and and being being called to it. Mm. But I've largely had a really um, easy life, and uh, you know everything's um, fallen for me very easily. And, and and indeed the path of enlightenment, uh, although we know there's lots of stages of enlightenment, has fallen fairly easily. And I, I employed a coach last year who said, look, you've written 10 books, Tom, but you've never written a book about you, about your path. And I said, well, it's boring because he wants to hear about Tom. He said, but she said, you've done this path without going to hell and back. And mm. so many people seem to have this kind of near death experience, which I know you have. And I wonder, because it's, it's kind of interesting, if you don't mind me being slightly self-indulgent in this interview. Why do you think so many people have to struggle so much to get to enlightenment? Maybe it's some uh, karmatic thing. I don't know, but yeah. um, um, I think it's true uh, for many people. It's it it's true. Uh, sickness and hard times they have to endure. That um, they 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 experience a breakthrough. Maybe you know. I think many times it is something to do with that. Your the heart is more or less hardened and you need to break through that shell in order for the inner light to shine out and before that that's a process that maybe takes people again through a lot of hard times you know and for yourself when you when you you talk about that you feel that your path have been more or less light and you have had no real troubles to so maybe that's because there maybe there's not so much karmatic stuff for you to 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 um, to burn out you know you, you and maybe it's just that you are on a certain point in in on your path that this is the 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 experience you have to 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 discover and go through so is it okay? I mean, just you know, because I'm 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 a raised a Catholic, and obviously, as a Catholic, you come in with in inbuilt guilt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> part part of the part of the programming. So I feel like guilty to to have had it so easy, and uh, and therefore sharing this in a book. I, I've got like, why should I do this? Is it okay to do that? <laughs> you should be guilty, <laughs> but you know, it's it's more. Uh... No, I think that's that's hilarious. That's really great to because uh, I think there's so many di diverse way, and it just tell us that that God's world is one of diversity, and everything goes. There's no set rules for anybody. You have your path, I have mine, 
everybody has their own path and that's really what this is all about your story tells that this is what it's all about well listen this interview is about you not my book so i must talk to you about your path then <laughs> so you obviously had you've had a couple of uh, major traumas so obviously the, the, the first maybe was your little sister's death um uh, at the age of six and that was one of your first um openings to you call it esp i think in your biography mm. uh, how did that pan out what age were you at the time I was 10. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, the, the trauma was not just that she died. It was that I, you know, in a childish way, when you, you get uh, jealous on your uh, smaller uh, siblings, you know, that, that I actually had the thought just for a brief moment, split second, I just thought, oh, I wish she wasn't here. Not because I, of course, I, I wanted her to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, just in childish, uh, infantile jealousy. And suddenly I discovered that thoughts are not toll free. You should be careful what you what you wish for, mm -hmm. because. Could... So that was really the the trauma, the traumatic thing about it that I discovered that uh, she disappeared because of me. Because I thought I had I had this thought that uh, I wished she, she wasn't there, and suddenly the wish came true, and uh, of course that was, uh, um, yeah, that was really. It it took me many many years to to discover from that. That's a huge burden for a ten year old to have on his shoulders. Yeah. From that on, you know, it 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 meant that uh, it opened up a lot of uh, what you would call kind of ESP, but. It was actually very exhausting to have this experience, and it went on for three years. I was able to to feel other people's pains. I was able to to kind of look through people uh, in a way that was not pleasant, and it was really confusing for me and really scary because, as I told you, I was only ten years. I had no had no apparatus to to handle all these things. So when I was fourteen. I uh, got a book in the post uh, from Hassad Inayat Khan, a Sufi master, and uh, it was sent to me by anonymous post. I don't know, if, to this day, I don't know who sent it to me. Fabulous. That book really uh, saved my life in many ways. It was a book of uh, aphorisms, and I opened it uh, randomly, and the first uh, aphorism I wrote was something like this. If you will approach us, we will bow down and lift you up. And to me, it was like the angel was talking to me, and it was like, yeah, it really saved my life. From that moment on, I knew that I was not alone with my spiritual insights and stuff. Uh, so, And from then on, I started, that was where my study really started. I started to, of course, to try and find more stuff about Hasrat and I at Khan. And uh, Rudolf Steiner was one of the first uh, mystics I uh, acquainted, and so forth. You know. Yeah, I, I, I read a lot of Steiner as well, like his work. And what I like about Steiner is that you have a thought uh, in, let's say, the late 20th century or early 21st century. You think, oh, I wonder if something's like that. Then you read one of his books and find out that he was writing about it years ago. And obviously before that, yeah. the ancients were writing about uh, things years and years ago. And I know you've done lots of study into the... The New Testament as well, into the, the the real meanings behind the New Testament, and um, yes, yes. and yeah, you know, I think many people might understand it to be um, something that's got lots of Chinese whispers, and then people start to believe the Chinese whisper as opposed to the the real study. But what's the what's the what did you find the essence of the teachings? And that's, I guess this is what the book, The Law of Light, is all about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, in the eighties, I I started to study Aramaic the language of Jesus, because I found that uh, that is the key to understand a lot of the the things that Jesus is uh, saying in the New Testament. And without that key, actually, you're not able to understand the real meaning behind what, what his work and his message. So since 88, I've been uh, studying Aramaic and uh, uh, 
to this day, every day is like, you know, it's like that language is like, a, and that study is like a flower that keeps on opening up, opening up and flower up every day with new uh, insights. So why did you study Aramaic? Because, you know, uh, that language is so wonderful. Because without it, you, you, you won't understand anything of what you say. You know, when in our language, you can find words that have maybe two meanings. But when you use one meaning, the other one is out. In Aramaic, one word can have eight, nine different meanings. And sometimes meanings that are quite opposite to each other. But you never, uh, you, you always include all of them. So you understand to on to when you tra try to translate what Jesus said into Greek and into Latin and stuff in English or Danish, you 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 understand how difficult it is because what meaning should you take from from a a, a certain word? But the, the 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 answer to this question is you shouldn't take one of them. You need all of them in order to understand. You just need to understand that one of the meanings are more in front of the other. And it shifts in, in, in your, so it, it kind of uh, is in, in um, it's in balance with where you are on your path. So when you read the New Testament from, from an Aramaic perspective, when you are 20 years old, and when you do it when you're 40 years old, there'll be a huge difference in your way of perceiving it. Wonderful. Now, can you speak Aramaic? No, not what, but I understand it. And, and it's not about speaking it. It's about understanding the psychology behind the language. That's really what this is all about. So that's, that's what my book, the, the Law of Light, is all about. Wonderful. So could you give me an example of a phrase and, and how it might have multiple levels? Yeah, you know, you were talking about sin. Yeah. Just before. in Aramaic, there's no expression for sin. Sin doesn't exist in the, uh, and that's very funny because sin is such a great thing in Christianity. I mean, it has been the driving force in the church and everything, but it doesn't exist in the world of Jesus. The the expression for sin, uh, haimanuta, is really meaning to miss the mark. Mm. If if you are uh, having a bow and you're trying to, to burn. and it really means that if you miss the mark, you have to go to, to go closer to the, to the target. That means remoteness is the real sin. If you're remote from, from in everything you do, you have to be really focused. That's the message. If to, to, if you want to, 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 to succeed in anything you do, you have to stay focused or else you will miss the mark and in the Christian perception be sinful. So it's all about to be, uh, to be precise, to be focused and to be present. Wow, that is so incisive. I love that. Thank you so much. And of course, the whole of the Catholic Church is built on the original sin. I remember when I was a child, I was a good boy because I didn't want to go to hell, not because I wanted to go to heaven. Yeah. So you know that you were you, when you were ten, you had this um, this this issue where certain powers were um, made open to you, and then you had to maybe close down again. Is there a need nowadays to help children that might be similarly afflicted? And that's my wife and I. That's some of the work we are doing. A lot of young people and come to us. And uh, in in my home time in Aarhus, there's actually uh, a group of youngsters. They call themselves spiritual youngsters of Aarhus. Wow! And uh, I go there uh, as often as I can to do free uh, workshops or talks, and, and so. So there, I think there are two hundred fifty at the moment. So, so do you think then going back to that idea about missing the mark then? Because you obviously had this this second experience, didn't you, where um, you you uh, almost uh, catatonic almost for a, so, uh, several times. And that's when you met the seer who brought you out of that. Do you think there's? Do you think that you were missing the mark, and it was a way of spirit bringing you back and putting you into that state? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I, from I mean, as I told you, during my my stay in uh, showbiz, I, I read and read and read and read all those books and. 
took all this information in, all this wisdom, without really integrating it in, into my life. So that meant I, I had to, to lie down for three years uh, on a bed, being ill. Nobody could give me a diagnosis. So after three years, I, come, I was connected to the seer, and he healed me over the phone. And afterwards, I, I, um, I, I became a kind of uh, apprentice to him, worked with him for seven years. And that was really the, the, the start of uh, a complete new way of living for me. And uh, that was when I understood I had to take my calling seriously. The seer sounds like a fascinating man, someone I would have loved to have met, but apparently he passed away. Uh, yeah, 2007, yeah. Oh, that's a great But this, I met him in 1998. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was, when, and that was actually when, when I wrote the book in 2000. So in some ways you're carrying his baton now. Uh, yeah, in one way, yes. I, I would never compare myself to him, but, uh, <laughs> you know, each of us ha ha has our own way, you know. But I learned a lot from him. I learned so much from him. So I'm very grateful for that. That's wonderful. So going the, the, the law of light in your latest book, um, that's absolutely fascinating because it seems to me to be almost deconstructing all the layers of onions that um, uh, the various churches have put on the teachings in the Bible. And you're almost going back to, to, to sort of first principles again to yeah. come up with um, a treatise which is, is kind of mind-opening. And, and I'm just intrigued why you use that title, the law of light. It's so evocative. It's yeah, because the law of there, you know, there is a law in the universe that everybody is. Uh, you we carry it in our hearts, just and everybody knows it, but we seem to have forgotten all about it. And really, when Jesus or Yeshua, but the, his real name, when he came in as a, a great avatar, he was one of the latest to to in a in a line of other avatars who came in on the earth plane. To, to tell us that we have to remember this law. And that, uh, that is really what, what, what his work is all about, is the law of light. And the law of light is, is, uh, is an ethical uh, system or law that um, runs through everything in the universe. And every time you oppose it, um, I mean, it's by us opposing the law of light that we are, we, we, are have, we are living in a world that we are discovering today that, you know, all our problems and, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's about that. Uh, and it gives you uh, some, some um, what do you call it, some... Um, it gives you answers to your questions. It gives you keys to open all the locked doors. And it's a remedy for today, really. But a lot of the problems today seem to be because so many people <clears throat> are divided about who they worship. So we know it's, it's logical to me as a, because I've got an engineering mind, is that there must be one God, not like several of them. Although there might, there might be lower deities in in the rankings, but uh, we've got one person that worships one God and another that worships another, and then they start taking guns up. But they've also got different avatars. But surely all the avatars that the Muhammad and, uh, and and Jesus and Buddha are all coming kind of from the same place with kind of the same message. Of course. How do you solve that one? You know, there's nothing to solve really because uh, there's there's the avatars that we know about that are known, and there's a lot of avatars, lesser avatars maybe, that works from more in, in the hidden, in a hidden way. But um, mm. what I'm really thinking about is that um, there's no, you know, it's like God, you know, what you said before, there's one belief in one God and another. But, you know, if you go to Egypt and you order a cup of coffee and you, you need sugar in your coffee, you, you, you make them understand that. If you go to India... You ask the same thing, but, you know, sugar, there's a lot of different expressions for sugar all over the world, but it's still it's the same thing. It's the same with God, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of names for the same thing. And uh, the problem is that if you go back to the time of Jesus, there was a philosopher, Philo, in Egypt, uh, a Jewish uh, philosopher who said, 
don't you ever take the scriptures, uh, you must never read them and take them for, for granted, you know. It's symbolic tales of possibilities for human beings to discover their true selves. And what really went wrong was that a lot of people have taken that very, uh, you know, read the scriptures, uh, not symbolically, but um, taking them more and more, more or less for granted, you know, and said, so that's the trouble. And so so, so <clears throat> does the law of light put that straight? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Well, it's, it's going to be the next on my reading list, that's for sure. <laughs> And I do apologise. I've not read it before we've uh, before we spoke, but I kind of wanted to speak to you first, just to understand where where, where you were coming from. So, what's what's next for you then? Uh, what's you you've got more books to write and more teachings to decipher? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but right now, I'm doing a documentary on the law of life that we uh, we shot uh, last year in in Israel, Palestine. On, um, I'm very connected to Palestine and Israel, so I go there often, uh, and my wife are also. So um, we spend a lot of time there, and uh, it's quite mind blowing to be at some of the same spots. You know, for example, at the Dead Sea. Have you ever heard about the Essenes? I have. Yeah, I met some Essenes uh, several years ago, and and I've also had the same experience you had. Is someone gave me some DVDs. I think they were in the scene. They said, um, here's some DVDs. They're full of esoteric material. You'll know what to do with them. Then they disappeared. It's okay. kind of weird. So, that, yeah, I've, I've met them in a, in a kind of weird way. But, you know, the scenes, they were kind of, uh, they, they, um, that was the mystery school, you could call it that, where Jesus really had his education. Yeah. And is there a, a, a case, because I mean, there's, there's quite a few mystery schools dotted around the world. Do you think there's a, a case and a need for a de-mystery school? Yeah, we uh, actually, uh, Gita and I, uh, we had one here for five years. We just uh, finished it off uh, last year. It was only supposed to be t for two years, just an experiment. We had 300 Danes uh, following this school for five years. And after five years, we found out that we um, it took too much of our time and we were... We, we couldn't do anything else, and there was so much more we had to do. Gita is, is working with sound, uh, the note from heaven, a concept she had been she had been working with for many many years, thirty years. She's a sound therapist, and we work very closely together because you know the Essenes and the therapist of uh, Alexandria uh, in Egypt, they were they were working with sound. And that's another very very interesting thing that sound. Um, is the medicine of the future? Indeed, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, it can do a lot more. You can, you can, you can levitate things with it and do all sorts of things. Some, so it's almost like then some of the old, the old skills then may well become the new technologies then over the next um, centuries. That's what we discover everywhere. Another a very, very um, exciting thing is that to 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 know that all the people in Silicon Valley. All the people who sit and, and who are uh, developing all the the instruments, the telephone, the, the, our computers and stuff, their kids are not allowed to use those instruments before they are 15 years old. They have created their own school there uh, where there's no uh, electrical or digital apparatus. Um, and it's, I find it interesting that the people who are developing it don't want to use it themselves, and also I I, um, I experience a lot of uh, doctors who if uh, if a doctor uh, physicist of uh, what do you call it doctors uh, doctor of uh, medicine medical doctor or yeah uh, when they uh, caught cancer or something like that they don't want to go through their own, uh, they go to, to healers, you know, and alternative uh, healers. That, I find that very interesting too also. So I, f I find that there's a, a, a development going on, that, that uh, a lot of things are opening up now for the old ways, you could call it that, ways that we have we are, we are been using medicines for, for thousands of years that... Uh, uh, the industry, the medical industry, pharmacy industry, want to 
to, to suppress uh, medicines, herbs and stuff that have been known for years, thousands of years. And um, all this, I find that things are opening now and more and more people are, are opening to it. And is there a possibility then? Because I, I, what I surmise, Bol, of this is that um, largely as society's got very secular, we've kind of separated from source and we've forgotten where we came from. And that's made us become masters of the physical plane. So we, we know how you know stuff works and we can make semiconductors and fly rockets to the moon and all these wonderful things. Mm. Is there a, a possible uh, opportunity where we don't have to throw away the new ways and bring back the old, but we can just synthesize some of the old with the new and get the best of both worlds? I, th I find it very, very odd that uh, we send uh, a piece of junk out in the universe, you know, to find life out there. Mm -hmm. Is there life out there? The, the main question is, is there life on Earth? Mm. I find that a very interesting question. Mm. I mean, there's, there's four real good questions. Who am I? Where do I come from? What are, am I doing here? And where am I going? Instead of uh, trying to find, uh, of course there's life in the universe. I mean, you have to be really, really stupid if you, you don't think there is life there. It's been proven uh, many times. But the main thing is that you can find old scriptures, 2,000 years, 3,000 years old, in which you can read about how to travel in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of it I have included in the Law of Light because I find it uh, uh, a part of uh, Jesus' teachings. And uh, everybody should know that, that because this is, I mean, I think that the, if they heard about in the old mystery schools that we were sending uh, junk out in, the, in space, they would, they would just uh, shake their heads and laugh and say, why should they do that? Why go to all their efforts when they can just sit down and meditate and, and uh, get there much faster? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the next thing is, how, we, we, to, how do we manifest on other planes? How do we manifest on... on because you remember Jesus he says somewhere, my father's... Uh, uh, my father's... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my father's. Uh, there's many mansions in my father's uh, kingdom, yes, and those mansions means really there's other planes of of um, to be on. There's many of the universes, them other planets, but also all other conscious uh, planes of consciousness where you can uh, incarnate and you can travel to. So that's, they are really, really, really so light years in front of our kind of science today. You know? Well, that's not that funny because um, about two years ago, I wrote a book called Planes of Being, and it, yeah. it talks exactly about that. Yeah. And actually, um, and that was modeled on the tarot. Yeah. And actually, the, the, the minor arcana of the tarot oh, yeah. tells the same story, which is fantastic. It's all around us if we just want to look at the clues. It's exactly and the more clues, the better, you know. And it's yeah, yeah. come from a diverse, uh, diverse ways, you know. It must come there. What would your guidance be for somebody that's either lost their way or just starting out on their path to, to find their way home? Always to be true to your own inner voice. And sometimes you mistake that inner voice or your own... Um, smaller voice for your real inner voice and uh, but that shouldn't make you st stop just trying to find that inner voice and sometimes you have to also to, to discover that every time you you go through hard times you shouldn't see it you, you, you should really see it as a gift from God hmm. even if it's a hard it's really painful and stuff but you know pain is the messenger and the message is, wake up. So every time we, we, we endure hard times, it is a kind of message to us that is really helpful. So we, we can use that to, 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 as a guidance to find the right path. And so be true to yourself and, uh, and 
all, all your qualities you bring into life, be true to them. A lot of people are, get, are getting sick because they, they are suppressed or they are suppressing themselves with what they are real here for. And they try to live up to norms that other people are setting. But norms, you know, they are here for break, to, to be broken, you know. You should just never live up to any other norms than your own. Now, that is absolutely beautiful. Now, I've got to tell you a really funny story then, which will, yes. which will, which will confirm what you just said. Yeah. So I, the Zone show is pretty full up, to be honest with you. I've got um, interviews probably stretching out to, to May, and most of them are from people who I kind of know or in a circle that I know or this sort of stuff or get introduced to me by somebody who knows somebody that I know and that kind of thing. But when I got an, in, I got an email through from Watkins Publications, your picture was in the middle of it. And I clicked on it. I went, I've got to get this guy on his own show. I don't know him, Adam. So I just sent him a message. I hope he can come on it. And I'm thrilled that you made time today. <laughs> and that was just my inner voice saying, I've got to connect with this man. Thanks. I'm glad you did. Um, me too. So where where's the best place, place for people to find you and find your books and your teachings, Lars? It's on uh, my, web, my web site. And uh, soon there will be a Law of Light uh, site called lawoflight.net. Okay. Uh, it will be up in next month, and it will it will also offer workshops uh, on the Law of Light Academy, and uh, there'll be workshops around the world in in England also, and in Ireland, Scandinavia, and so forth, France. Oh well, when, when you're over in England, I'll try and make sure I come along and we meet in person. That'll be a real <laughs> joy. Right. And for people, uh, I'll put the link um, below the the podcast. Um, but for people that don't know how you spell your name, it's l a r s m u h l dot com. Yes, that's where we'll find you. Right, that's great. Well, listen, I, I I hope that this is the the first of many conversations, Lars. It's been a real joy, be great, and a pleasure to speak to you today. And uh, go well, and I wish you love and life. Yeah, the same to you, Tom. Thank you very much for having me. Take care. Bye bye. So thanks for listening to the Zone Show. If you pop over to my website, www.tomevans.co, you'll find loads of books and resources that will help you get in and stay in the zone.